Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Today we're back on the second update 1.101 dev server and it's time to have a look at the Akebono. This is a new rank 2 machine which is coming to the Japanese naval tree in update 1.101 and it's coming in as a premium. The rewards on it are 480% and 390% which are pretty nice uh, comparable to the PGO2 but slightly better. The Akebono comes in as something which will be able to efficiently grind rank 3, 2 and 1, so all the way up to destroyers, and right now, if we have a look at it, it is very similar to another machine that's in the tree, in the form of the uh, Isuzu. The Isuzu has two dual mounted 3 inch guns, where the Akebono has two single 3 inch guns, and the Ikazuchi is probably the closest in uh, vehicles to it, when that has the two 3 inch Mark 33s, and so does the Akebono. The Akebono also has a dual mount of 40mm, uh, whereas the Ikazuchi Ikezu also has. So if you are interested in the Ikazuchi, you'll also be interested in the Akebono. The only real difference between the two machines is the propulsion system, which is on board. And uh, this basically means that, at least in my opinion, this is a perfect premium. What you want out of premiums, uh, from my point of view, is something that gives you a tech tree experience, but is slightly different in a very minor way. If you make it too different, then it isn't like the tech tree experience. And if you make it too good, then it is obviously pay to win. And then if you make it too bad, well nobody's gonna buy it. So making something similar to it, and in the form of ships, we have so many examples uh, to be able to add to the game, uh, I think that is the way to go. So at 3.3, two 3-inch guns, you have to understand, are 76.2 millimeters in the game. What this means is this vehicle uh, will not hull break stuff with its main guns, but the main guns do do a ton of damage because they have a good fire rate for the BR, so if you can get up close and personal with stuff like PT boats and battle boats, or even at a distance, you can do a lot. The only issue the Akebono has, and the only issue the Chidori has, and the only issue that Ikazuchi has, and also stuff like the Isuzu and the Chikugo is when they get up to it into 4-3, 4-0, sometimes they just become destroyer base, and that's the main issue with this. But anyway, the 3-inch guns have access to HE, APHE, and also HEVT, which is kind of nice. So you have a little bit for everything. The HE pens absolutely nothing, but it does pen 8 millimeters, and uh, this means you will be able to pen a decent amount of stuff. Uh, the APHE is able to penetrate 135, 116, 51 respectively, which is pretty nice. And the VT even has less pen than the HE. It's sat at seven millimeters, but you're gonna be using this to take out planes, so it's not too much of a big deal. The secondaries, the 40 millimeters, you are able to uh, get HE and AP on them or universal. So I think that's really good as well. And also you have access to a ton of mortars if you feel like it, and also depth charges. So you can get what uh, is very similar to the hedgehog motor on the front of it. You can also get a bunch of dev chars launchers on the back and also some which fall off the back. So if you feel like having extra ammo racks on your machine, go ahead. You can do that in three different ways. Uh, because of the way that the armor is on this thing, it's only 16 millimeters uh, on the hull and also uh, eight, uh, sorry, four millimeters on the superstructure, it is really easy to kill this thing. And the only extra armor you get is 9.52 millimeters, which is on the Bofors machine guns, uh, well, sorry, cannons on the back. Now these Bofors do fire incredibly fast. They are a great secondary to have. It would be nice to have a little bit more, um, but you know, you kind of get what you get when it comes to these things. You can also see that it does have a surge radar antenna on it, a beautifully large bridge, which is a wonderful target uh, to aim at, and also, since it has no extra armor, massive ammo storages for those 3-inch guns. So you can make this thing go pop quite easily. You also have some transmissions and stuff as well for it. So yeah, that's pretty much the Akebono in a nutshell. It's a vehicle which has a little bit going for it. Um, I would say it has the same fundamental issue as a lot of naval does, unfortunately, where you end up in this situation 
where you have these kind of interesting machines like the Akabono is not you know a World War II machine it's pretty modern and you can see that the fire rate on the guns is incredibly good you know it fires a hell of a lot of rounds uh, very quickly they don't do you know a metric ton of damage but they do enough damage to be able to be useful but when it comes to the big berthers when it comes to the um, massive machines that you have such as the destroyers will it be able to actually you know uh, link up with them will it be able to do enough damage to them to justify it so here is the general fire rate of the guns you can see it's a pretty decent fire rate um, for these things you know it's basically around every second second and a half and also as I said it does have all of the launches so you have the ones on the back which just fall off the booty then you have stuff such as the uh, launches on the side and then of course the launcher out the front as well that you can see right there so that's always nice to see and with the fact that the uh, gun doesn't do a ton of damage with HE because of the fact that it doesn't have a lot of uh, penetration even against stuff like destroyers uh, penetration does matter um, especially under a certain criteria generally when it's under uh, something like 10 millimeters that's normally not a great sign but with the uh, machine right here the Akabono you can see that you can do a little bit of damage <laughs> against the destroyer but it's nothing magical and imagine if that destroyer over there which i believe is a Farragut it has four guns on it if it pointed them your way yeah you're getting twatted and it's it, it's really sad for Noble um, because we keep getting these machines like the Akabono like stuff like the Chigugo, uh, like stuff uh, like the uh, other Japanese machines, even that machine that we just got for the uh, Soviets. And the machines themselves are really interesting. And you can see how if just destroyer escorts and gunboats actually fought each other, it would be a pretty fun, you know, little meta that you would have. It would be kind of like a mini destroyer meta. But now we're in a situation where uh, naval is, these things are going to go up against destroyers and they're just going to get battered. It would be much nicer if when enduring confrontation comes around or when something similar comes around, uh, such as, I don't know, some, some game mode where these machines are actually worth it because now, you know, these machines even get destroyer spawns. So yeah, they're going to get twatted even more um, when they get upted into destroyers. It would be nice if there was some place in the game for them. This machine doesn't even have torpedoes, so you don't even have what is sometimes a get-out-of-jail-free card in the form of torpedo launches. Instead, you are stuck just firing away with these two guns and hoping for the best uh, when it comes to dealing with larger ships. But against smaller ones, um, it should actually do pretty well uh, because it's able to stay at range. But the problem is a lot of the naval maps are kind of designed so you have to get close to the battlefield to be able to capture the points, otherwise you're just going to lose. So you can't always stay at that range of two to three kilometers, which is probably the perfect uh, distance for a machine like this. And what generally happens is you have to go in, you have to fight, and there's going to be something with a rapid fire guns, whether it's 40s, whether it's 37s, whether it's even 20s. 20s if you get even closer and what's going to happen is well they're just going to twat you and it's not going to be a very fun uh, experience for you you're just going to die uh, there's nothing you'll be able to do about it you might be able to take one or two down with you uh, you might be able to do a decent amount of damage to a few of the larger ships but because of the fire rate of a lot of vehicles around those BRs you're just going to get just it's going to be a bad day. Stuff like the Albatross, stuff like the Freccia, stuff like this, which are very, very powerful um, when they go up against those smaller boats. And because this thing doesn't have the pedigree of facing or being one of those larger boats, it isn't able to counter that with the range issue as effectively as something like a Farragut. You can even see with me shooting this ship over here, changing from AP to 
to Heichi and throwing so many rounds at us. It's not even 50% dead. It's not as if these rounds are not accurate. These rounds have been incredibly accurate. You can see some of them are not even penetrating. They're not even doing damage. Showing that even when most of the time it's the correct idea to use HE, even against destroyers, this HE is trash. And this is just a real problem for this machine. I hope with the addition of all of these new styles of machine, uh, in War Thunder. Seems like we have a push for these destroyer escorts, for these frigates, for these gunboats. There will be some kind of way that they're worked into the mode. But that has to be shown. That has to be shown to me. And right now, I don't see it, unfortunately. So even though, you know, it's got really nice rewards on it, it's a really interesting machine uh, to bring in a 3 3 lineup with stuff like the PT boat that's there. It's a hard sell, it really is, uh, just because of the fact these machines don't really fit in the game. They're, they're kind of between two very powerful ideas, and they just don't capitalize on either of them. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. I'd like to thank Ambrosius McClellan, B. Young, Battling Bacon, Blackie, Chris Giltnane, Conte Baraka, Daniel Stanton, E Love Goat, J Wilt, Martinez, Trigger Hippie, Universe, Eugene's Terry, and also AI'm Devilish and Samuel Slick for supporting the channel.